and welcome to the video. So I have several series on my shelves that are unfinished and one of my goals for this year was to try to finish as many series as possible. I think I've gotten through two maybe three and it's the end of August. Um, so let's talk about all of my unfinished series. One of my most recent unfinished series is Nevermore The Trials of Morgan Crow. I started this in May, I want to say. Really, really enjoyed it. I have read the second book, Wondersmith, which was really good. And the third book in this series, Hollow Pox, comes out in October. I did order the limited edition box from Owl Crate Jr. and I am so, so excited to see what that looks like. I am probably going to purchase the like paperback for this book as well just so my series is complete but this has just been such a whimsical series that has really really made me love middle grade. The next series that I have to finish is An Ember in the Ashes. I have read An Ember in the Ashes and I've read A Torch Against the Night. I, I know that A Reaper at the Gates is in stores and it has been since last year but I purchased the paperbacks and I want my series to match. Um, A Reaper at the Gates actually comes out in paperback September 1st so that's only six days away, seven days I think. So once that is available in paperback I'm going to purchase it and finish this series. I have really really enjoyed it. I haven't read anything else by Sabah Tahir. I do believe she has other series though but the world that she has created here has just been so so good and I just wasn't expecting a lot of the things that happened like what ends up like being Elias's fate. I really love Laia and just watching her grow and become more outspoken and strong and confident in herself and I love Helene. I believe that's how you say her name. Helene. Um, she there's definitely a more internal struggle with her between like you know, who she is as a black guard, something like that. I can't remember what they're called. Basically, she's like an elite guard, and that's what she's been raised to become her entire life. And now she's realizing that she might have to choose between being one of these soldiers and doing what is right, which was never a question for Elias. He was just instantly like, this is wrong, this is right, I'm doing what's right. She has much more of an internal struggle and I am really liking seeing more of her perspective which is what we got in A Torch Against the Night. So I'm hoping we get to continue on with that in A Reaper in the Gates. This next one is more of a continuation than a finishing of the series but I read The City of Veils at the beginning of this year I believe and really really enjoyed it. There are three other books left in this series that I want to purchase but I got this in a Fade Crate box. It is absolutely gorgeous. And I want the rest of the series to match this but I know that's not going to happen so I need to purchase this again in the like original format and then also purchase the rest of the books. I just enjoyed it so much. The premise is that your main character is a princess by day but a vigilante by night and she's kind of like worn between these two sides of herself and wanting to protect her kingdom but not wanting to do it from a throne behind like rows and rows and rows of guards and red tape basically. So it's interesting to see the kind of person that she is inside and outside of the palace and I think I gave this 5 out of 5 stars and I'm really really looking forward to continuing on. Now we finally have a series that I am on the last book of. I have yet to read Finale which is the conclusion to the Carval series. I loved the first two books. Absolutely loved Carval, loved Legendary even more which I didn't think was possible really really loved the dynamic between Tella and Dante, getting to see Dante's true colors, getting to see who Tella is when she's placed in a role of responsibility and can't just be this selfish party girl. I loved her growth in Legendary. I loved the twists and the turns and all of just the unexpected things that happened and that ending killed me and I'm honestly afraid to continue on with this because it could be so good that it wrecks me but it also could not end the way I want it to and that will wreck me as well. 
Next we have The Empress, which is the second in the Diabolic series. I thought that this was the end, that it was going to be a duology, but The Nemesis actually comes out today, so I definitely need to read this in order to read The Nemesis. Loved the first one, it's like a post-apocalyptic futuristic story about a Diabolic, which is like an AI robot who takes the place of her like not caregiver but the person that she cares for and protects. Uh, she goes in her place to this like spaceship where the royal family lives as like collateral damage because her dad kind of speaks out against what they do so they're like okay we want to keep you in check so you're gonna send us your daughter and she basically could possibly die here if you don't do what we say you need to do but instead of sending the daughter they send the diabolic because they don't care about her life and it's just really interesting to see like the warring inside of her between like her as a diabolic, a protector, a follower of rules, having to present as a human, a delicate girl who does not have the strength of like 50 men who could not kill you in a thousand different ways without breaking a sweat. Um, and to see one of the other characters, Tyrus, who fronts as the Mad King, but is not, the Mad Prince, but is not. He wants everybody to think that he's crazy because he is next in line for the throne. All of his other, like, family members have been killed, but he, as the Mad Prince, does not pose a threat to the current queen or, like, head of the royal family because they think he's mad. They think there's no way anybody is going to want him to rule and that's how he wants it. Secretly, he is still mad, but a genius. Um, especially given that he's so smart that he's able to seem so dumb. And I believe the last, the first book ended off in a cliffhanger, so I need to pick this up. I honestly don't know why I haven't. I think I'm like a hundred pages in, but I'm probably gonna have to start from the beginning and just have a do-over. But I really, really enjoyed this first book, so I want to continue on with this series. Next, we have a chunk of a book. Queen of Air and Darkness. This is almost a thousand pages and it is the third and final in the Dark Artifices series by Cassandra Clare. I read half of the Mortal Instruments, didn't really like it because I don't really like the relationship between Clary and Jace and the will they, won't they, I love you, we can, we're siblings, and that is a lot of what is in this between Emma and Julian. Just constantly getting so so close to finally being able to be together and then there's a curse and they can't but it might be a lie and you know they get so close and then Emma fucks up and they get so close and Julian messes up and it's just so frustrating and I don't remember how far I am into this the ending of Lord of Shadows was so so good and it involves more of the minor characters, the rest of the Blackborn family. I think that's what they're called. Um, one of the siblings dies. I won't say who, and I want to see more of their character growths and storylines than I really do care about Julian and Emma. But I know it's such a heavy part of this that it's why I've been so reluctant to finish it. Plus, it's huge. This is such a huge book. It's very, very daunting. Next up is Scene Red, which is the sequel to The Looking Glass Wars, um, which is a dark retelling of Alice in Wonderland, basically. It's Alice coming back from being stuck in the mortal world as an adult to her Aunt Red being in charge and having just basically decimated Wonderland and turned it into this dark authoritarian place and at the end of the first book she does defeat her aunt but obviously Red is not done and this is going to be a book that centers all around her trying to come back to power and I just really love it. I love a dark retelling. So I have two more series that I am hoping to finish which is the Cassidy Blake series by V.E. Schwab. It's a middle grade read. Really really love V.E. Schwab. I'm waiting for the last book to come out. It doesn't come out until next year which is disappointing. Um, but I loved the first books so, so much. It's just an easy read, but it's not something I have ever read before, so I'm hoping I can get to that 
And then I also want to finish the Asylum series by Madeline Rowe. I reread Asylum last week. I am currently listening to Sanctum on um, audiobook through Scribed and hopefully if I can finish that this week then I can purchase Catacombs which is the finale to that series. I read the first two books a really long time ago but honestly don't remember too much of what they were about just remember that I did enjoy them. The last series that I have to finish I think is my favorite series of all time so I don't know why I have not read this last book but it is King of Crows by Libba Bray which is the finale in the Diviners series. I love Libba Bray. I love everything she's written. I loved Beauty Queens, Going Bovin, and the Gemma Doyle trilogy and I have loved the first three books in this series and I am about 80 pages into this which is like 500-ish pages. First of all, I just love the overall setting of this. It's paranormal teens in the 1920s in Manhattan which I, I love the 1920s. I just love that era of style and culture and food and just so many things going on and New York in the 1920s. You've got flappers and civil rights movements and just so many things going on and the first book in this series is the most gruesome of all of them but might be my favorite and I just don't want this series to end. That's truly what it is. I'm not ready for this series to be over but I need to finish this. I just again want it to be so good that it kills me but I'm worried that if it's not executed in the way that I want it's still gonna kill me and I'm just gonna be disappointed. Those are all of the books that I hope to, are all of the series that I hope to finish this year. I believe that's 10 total. Um, we'll see if we do it. I definitely think that there are like four or five of these that I really, really, really want to get to. But who knows? So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Tell me what series you're trying to finish. Um, and why you haven't finished them yet. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!